The, day, uh, the first one is about non-compact Taylor Z flow, and the second one will be the uh, by uh, Professor Van Wankel from uh, Northwestern University. It will be on the compact Taylor manifold, but infinite time singularity for the Taylor Z flow. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, to begin with, I'd like to thank the <laughs> organizers, not just for the invitation, but since I've been here a week, but. Uh, already uh, for, for being very uh, generous and attentive hosts uh, during my stay. Um, I'm going to talk about um, the infinite time behavior of the Kayla Ricci flow. Um, let me just give an outline of my talk. Let me begin by talking about generally what are the different behaviors, so the T equals infinity behavior uh, of the Kayla Ricci flow. And I want to discuss the four different possi possible um, cases. Um, one of those cases uh, I'm going to call the collapsing case. And by that I mean that the volume is going to zero. Then I'll talk about the non-collapsing case, which means the volume doesn't go to zero. And then um, I'll talk about some elements of the estimates um, in, in, in the non-collapsing case. Sorry, in the collapsing case. So, so I'm going to only talk about cases where you, we have singularities. So let me, let me begin uh, with the, the basic setup. Uh, we're going to have m omega naught, um, a compact Kähler manifold. Uh, here, here, of course, I'm, I'm using uh, omega naught for the Kähler form associated to uh, the Kähler metric, G0. And um, the, uh, I want to consider, uh, so, so let, let omega t solve the Kähler Ricci flow, which I'll write as KRF, which is DDT of omega is minus the, the Ricci of omega, where, where omega at time zero is, is this uh, give, given initial metric omega naught. And of course, this Ricci of omega is, is given by um, minus dd bar log of the determinant of, of g. And um, we know that the, the cohomology class of um, so, so Ricci of omega is, a, of course, a closed 1-1 one, one form. And it's, it defines a, an element of cohomology. And this is known as the, the first Chern class. Well, this is usually a factor of 2 pi. Let me just ignore the 2 pi. This is an element of H11. One, one. So these are the, you can think of these as the, the closed real 1-1 one, one forms quotient out by the, the exact ones. And uh, one thing we notice is that um, given a solution omega t of the Kähler Ricci flow, we notice that uh, if you look at DDT of the cohomology class of omega t, so of course each omega is a closed 1 1 form, and uh, so this is an element of H11. This is simply given by minus C1 of m. And that means that uh, the, the set, the, the, the path of cohomology classes in H11, this finite dimensional vector space, is just a straight line. And so in other words, we see that omega t, the cohomology class, as long as the flow exists, is simply omega naught, the initial one, and then you're going in the direction of C1 of m. So minus t C1 of m. And what we notice is that this, of course, has to be a Kähler class as long as, so this is Kähler, that is, it admits a Kähler metric, in this case, of course, omega t, so it's a Kähler class, um, as long as the flow exists. As long as the flow exists. Well, it's a, it's a fundamental result of the kähler ricci flow, and I talked about this in my, in my mini course last week. It's a fundamental result that, um, in fact, uh, the flow exists exactly as long as this cohomology class remains a Kähler class. So let me state that more precisely. 
So, um, so the fact that there exists, and it's unique, a maximal, so maximal in time, solution of the kähler ritchie flow on, uh, on zero t, where, 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 where t is the, the, just the largest time, t, for which this cohomology class, omega naught minus t c one of m, is, a, is positive in the sense that this cohomology class has a, has a Kähler metric inside of it. So of course, this doesn't depend on the initial metric, only on the initial Kähler class. And this result is due to, uh, so Kwai Dong Cao and Suji proved some special cases. The general result is due to Tian, Tian and Zhou Zhang. Okay. Now I can draw a picture. So let me, let me draw the, the Kähler cone. So the, let me write it as Ka of m. So this is the, the, the Kähler cone of m. And by definition, this is just the set of cohomology classes uh, which admit a, a, a Kähler metric. Now, this is a, an open cone in this finite dimensional space. This is zero. And if I start with some, here's my initial Kähler class. Let's call it omega naught. And one thing you, you, you notice immediately from this result is that, um, is, that, is that t equals infinity if and only if um, this uh, minus c1 of m is in the closure of the Kähler cone. So let me, let me just illustrate that. So, uh, so, so, suppose, um, right, so suppose this is C1 of M. So I'll draw it so that it does lie in the, in the right way. So, so this, is, this is C1 of M. Then, of course, minus C1 of M is going in the opposite direction. And then you see that the, the uh, kähler ritchie flow will this, this family of classes will be in this direction. So this will be this uh, omega of t. Oh, this will be the, let me write this, omega naught minus t c1 of m. And you see that when minus c1 of m points in the direction of the closure, so it could be in the same direction as that line, for example, you, you'll, you'll, you'll remain within the Kähler cone. You'll never leave the Kähler cone. And therefore, uh, capital T will be infinity. Okay, so as long as you're in the closure of the Kähler cone, then, uh, as in this example, then, then uh, t, t is infinity. So what are the different possibilities? So there's four, four cases I want to discuss. So case one um, is, uh, is, of course, you could have C1 of m be zero. And in this case, um, you don't move. The commercial gas doesn't move. And then... Uh, in this result of Huai uh, Dan Cao, very well known result, that, that uh, omega t converges smoothly to a Ricci flat metric. Let's call it omega infinity, where, where, where the, the Ricci of omega infinity is zero. So these metrics, of course, were first constructed by Yao, and then Huai uh, Dan Cao gave, gave this Ricci flow proof. So that's the first case. So in this case, we don't have a singularity, of course. Case two, um, again, another well-known case, is when C1 of M, well, let's say minus C1 of M is positive, or in other words, C1 of M is negative. And again, um, uh, due to Huai Dong Cao, if you, if you take, uh, if you consider instead the, it, it's, it's normal in this case to consider the normalized flow. So we consider, let's call it normalized Kähler Ricci flow. You can see, of course, that the, in this case, well, this is like what the, the picture I drew. Of course, the, the volume of the Kähler class is going to go to infinity. So it makes sense to normalize. Um, you're essentially dividing by t so that the volume doesn't, doesn't, blow, doesn't blow up. So we consider the normalized Kähler Ricci flow. So DDT of omega is minus Ricci minus omega uh, at t is 0 is omega naught. And then, um, and then we have that omega t converges to omega infinity 
where the Ricci of omega infinity is, is minus omega infinity. So we get a Kähler-Einstein Kähler -Einstein metric. So these are the two cases where you don't have singularities. So what I want to, talk to, to, to focus on today is the case where you do. And there's, there's two, two, two cases where you do have singular, singularities. And those are going to be exactly the collapsing and non-collapsing cases. OK, so what are they? Well, the case, case three is when, um, so we're going to have minus C1 of m. Of course, it has to be in the, it's going to be in the, now it's going to be in the boundary of the Kähler cone. So it's in the boundary of the Kähler cone. And it's non-zero. And this is going to be the first one we're going to look at is the case when if you integrate minus C1 of m to the power n, so I guess I'm taking my manifold to be complex dimension n, then uh, th th this, is, this is equal to 0. OK, so let's assume, assume this. Now, in this case, you can, you can easily com calculate that um, the flow, of course, as in all these cases, exists for all time. And if you integrate the volume, so, so if you integrate the, the, the volume form, you get the volume of the manifold. In this case, you see that this goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. And so it's called the, uh, so we call it the collapsing. So by collapsing, I just, I simply mean that the volume is going to zero. So volume collapsing. Total volume is collapsing. Okay, so that's case three. And, and then there's the, the final cases, of course, where it doesn't, it's the same thing, but, 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 but when the volume doesn't go to zero. Okay, so I want to, um, so again, this is non-zero. <coughs> And then I want to consider the case where this is, this is, this is strictly positive. And in this case, this case, the, the integral of omega t to the n is, is bounded below by, by oh, OK. Here, 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 of course, if omega t, we're going to consider the normalized flow. So this solves the normalized Kähler-Ricci flow. And then we have this goes to 0. Um, and this again, when, when, when omega t sol solves this normalized Kähler Ricci flow. Okay, so this is, this, is what the, this is what I'll call the non collapsing. Okay, so those are the, uh, the, the, those are the two cases I want to focus on. So let me begin now with the, uh, with, with, with the, the collapsing, the collapsing case. So let's just remind you where we're at. So we've discussed this, and now I want to talk about the collapsing case. So what do we know about the collapsing case? Um, well, the first thing I want to do is make some uh, simplifying assumption. So, so, so well, about, about before I do that, let me just, uh, let me just give you an example. So the simplest example you could come up with is, is if, you, if you took a surface of high genus, say genus 3 I'm drawing here, and it's a genus bigger than 1, and then suppose you took a product with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a, a torus. And in this case, imagine you just took the product metrics. So in this case, we know well, this is a conference on Ricci flow. We all know that this, um, the volume, of course, of the base will get larger and larger. But you can rescale so that this has fixed volume. And if you do that, the, the torus will, will shrink. And so what's going to happen is um, you, you, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get a, if you just took the product metrics, you'll get conversions to a Kähler Einstein metric on the, on the base. And then the, uh, the fibers, the torus fibers, will just shrink to a point. Okay. So you get collapse to something lower dimensional. I want to make the following assumption. So which is going to be much more general than this, but it has the same basic, basic feel, feel to it. So first of all, let's assume that um, we have the following structure. So I want to assume that M has the structure of a fibration. So in other words, we have a map pi from M to B. So I assume that there exists a map, a holomorphic, holomorphic subjective map, but not just 
subjective, I want it to be a submersion, holomorphic submersion. So it has constant, has, has maximal, ma uh, max, maximal rank, where, where, where B is a, a compact Kähler manifold, is a compact Kähler manifold with first churn class negative, and I want to assume that uh, the fibers of this map, so pi minus one of, of y, for, for, uh, which, I'll, which I'll write as my, the fibers of the map are, um, are, are again, Kähler manifolds. Let's say, let's say that b is, has dimension m. Let's say, say Kähler manifolds uh, of dimension k, say, complex dimension k, with, uh, with vanishing first churn class. So C, C, C1 of my is zero. So in other words, they're kalabi yar manifolds. Okay, so this is a really direct kind of generalization of this to higher dimensions. Um, it looks like this is a very strong assumption. It's really not that strong assumption. I'm gonna explain that the general picture is more or less like this, but you have to allow singularities. So this is the, um, the, the assumption. And then, um, we, of course, we want to ask the question, so what happens to the kähler ritchie flow? Um, and uh, we want to know what happens to the metric. So we want to we get some kind of picture like, like that, but in higher dimensions. So here's the, here's the theorem. So this is a joint work with Valentino Tosati and, uh, and, 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 uh, and Xiao Kui Yang. Frank Wei Yang, who, who was a, at the time a, a postdoc at Northwestern. So what we show is uh, that um, that uh, there, there exists constants C and delta such that the, the following we have the following estimates. So so number one, if you look at um, Omega of t, the solution of, well, I should say to be precise. Okay, so, so let omega t solve the normalized, just to be clear, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the normalized kähler ritchie flow, and we know it exists for all time. So look at omega t and then pull back. I want to pull back a certain metric from the base. So I want to describe what this omega b is in a second. Now, if I look at this, if I, if I look at this, this difference of uh, one one forms and I take the norm, the C zero norm with respect to the fixed metric omega naught, this is uh, going to zero exponentially fast. Okay. So what is omega b? Where, uh, where, where omega b is the, is the unique, what I'll call, what we call um, twisted kähler einstein metric. So the existence of this, well, I'll explain in a second. This is, this is, not, this is not coming from us. The twisted kähler einstein metric, uh, which solves that the Ricci of omega b, so it's a metric on, on the base b, is, is minus omega b, and then plus, um, plus the, the so-called Val-Peterson metric. And I'll explain a little bit what, what I mean by this. And this, this basically this is, is measuring the failure of your manifold to be a, a fiber bundle, if you like. Okay. So, so, so that's, this is really saying that you have convergence of these metrics to, to a 1-1 one, one form. It's of course a degenerate 1-1 one, one form. It's not a metric on M. Um, so you get this, this nice convergence, uh, this nice uh, convergence property, and it's, and it's exponential. Number two, the other question you can ask is not what, just what happens to omega t, but you, but you might ask, well, what happens in the fiber direction? As in this picture, as the, the, these elliptic curves in the picture are shrinking to zero, you kind of expect that they're getting uh, flatter and flatter, the metrics, when you're restricted to, to, the, to, the, to the fiber. And that's what we see in general. In general. So what we get is that, um, so for all y and b, if you take um, omega t and you restrict it to the fiber, which I call my, 
And then uh, let's rescale, because we know that the fibers are going to be shrinking. So I rescale by e to the t. And then I subtract by something so, so which I'm going to call omega srf. Now, this is the semi-Ritchie flat. I'm going to explain in a second where, how to define this. Restricted to my. This is a 1, 1 form on m, which gives you a Ritchie flat metric in the fibers. So this... Uh, now take the uh, again the norm in the uh, in, 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 in with respect to omega naught, but I guess here restricted to m y. And again, this is going to zero exponentially fast. So what this is saying is that the metrics in the five direction, when you rescale, are, are going to to a Ritchie flat metric in the fibers. And and moreover, uh, we get uh, we get that in fact this e to the t omega is actually converging to this omega semi-Ritchie flat, again, restricted to the fiber, in, in, uh, in C alpha, where alpha is between 0 and 1. So here, here I stated for C0, but actually we get a little bit better than that. And then the third uh, is, is actually just a simple consequence of the first, which is that if you, if you want to look globally what's happening, well, these... Um, these manifolds are converging as metric spaces, so converge in a gromov hausdorff sense to, 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 uh, to, 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 to B omega B. Okay, so we get gromov hausdorff conversions. Okay, so those are the... Uh, that's the, that's the, the main result under this assumption. And I, okay, so let me say a few, a few words about, about that. Maybe I don't really need this. No. Okay, so let me make some remarks because there's been a lot of... I need to explain some of the notation and also explain some of the previous results because this didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, so so some, some remarks. So the, the first is that... Uh, so what is this omega... Right, the, so, so, so the, the existence of omega b and the uniqueness, this is due to Song Tian. And then uh, to, to explain the, um, the, uh, the notation, so, so, so suppose, um, suppose that for, for y and b, for y and b, we have, um, let's call it psi y, is a global holomorphic uh, N0 form. Oh, maybe I should, sorry, I should, guess that should be dimension K, so it should be K, K0 form on the fiber MY. And then suppose it's varying holomorphically, uh, holomorphically in Y. Then, then this Val Peterson metric you can define to be minus DD bar, so again, this is defined on B dd bar log of the integral of psi y wedge psi y bar. Psi y bar. Uh, where you integrate over the fiber. And in the case where, where it's, it's locally just a product, this would just give you zero. But in the case where it's not a product, you get something which is non-zero. In general, do there exist such uh, holomorphic K0 forms? A top dimension, uh, the, the, these K0 forms on MY, which are, remember, are K-dimensional. Well, no, not necessarily, but this is a, like a global section of the canonical bundle. But you can always find a, 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 this, a global section of the canonical bundle raised to a power, and then you can just define something similar. So, so, so it, it's, it's more or less pretty, pretty general. Okay. Uh, so n number two, what is this semi-Ritchie flat? So, so here... Um, if you take, uh, so by Yau's theorem, remember that each of these fibers, by assumption, is a Calabi, is a, it has, has vanishing first churn class. So Yau's theorem says if you take omega naught and restrict it to the fiber, that's a Kähler metric on, on a manifold with, with C1 is zero. And therefore, um, there exists a row, so there exists a, a row which will depend on Y such that uh, if you add dd bar of rho, this is, is Ritchie flat. Let's call it rho y. This is Ritchie flat. K, K, Ritchie flat and Kähler 
on, on, uh, on MY. So this is all in the, in the MY direction. So just, in the fi just restrict to a fiber. Uh, so, so, so just apply Yarn's theorem to each fiber. But then, uh, but then you notice that, um, that the, these, 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 uh, these rho y's actually depend smoothly on y. These depend smoothly on y. And so you can define, um, so actually they define a function rho on m. So they define, they define a function rho on the whole of m. And then, and then we define, uh, we define this omega semi-Ricci flat simply to be omega naught plus dd bar rho, where now, where now this, this, this was in the my direction, but now this is in all directions. So we differentiate also in the y, y direction. And then, uh, and then the point is that this is not necessarily a metric. This is not necessarily a metric. But when you restrict to every fiber, it gives you a Ricci flat metric. But is a Ricci flat metric is a Ricci flat metric when restricted to each fiber. To each fiber. To each MY. Okay, so that's the so-called semi semi Ricci, semi Ricci flat metric. Of course, it depends on omega naught in a rather non-trivial way. Okay, so that's uh, all right. So, so, so that's just to explain the notation. Number three is some previous results. So this um, setting, uh, the first people to consider the Kodorichi flow, I think, in the setting were Song and Tian. And then, uh, and they considered actually a rather singular case, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but then there's some other work, uh, starting with. Jan Song and myself in our lecture notes, which, um, and uh, and then work of Gill and then Fred, Frederick Fong and and uh, 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 Joe Zhang, where we consi they're considered uh, more like this setting. And what's so what's known before is that you get um, you actually get you get a stronger result. You can actually get smooth convergence if you assume that the fibers admit flat metrics. So we get, get smooth convergence. Get smooth convergence if the fibers um, admit actual flat metrics, not Ricci flat, but flat. So this is, a, this is uh, so in, if, if the fiber is dimension one, of course, this, is, this would always be true. Um, in general, not. So, for example, if the, 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 the fibers could be um, high, higher, dimension, higher dimensional torus, for example. This case is rather special. When the, um, when the fibers are flat, it turns out that along the kaler ricci flow, the curvature become, is bounded. And then it's not very difficult. Once you, once you have curvature bounded, you get, every, you get everything bounded, basically. And then... Um, and then, and then uh, it, 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 it's, it, you, get, you get very strong results, including you get smooth convergence. This case, um, the, 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 if the fiber is not flat, it's a collabial but not a flat metric, you will not get bounded curvature. So the curvature will blow up. So th this is, this is our, our main contribution is to extend to the case where, where, where you, don't, you don't just have flat, flat metrics. Also, as known before, so in general, um, it was known that you, you would get um, convergence of potentials. So convergence of the potential function. Let's call it phi. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can always, as, as you may know, you can always write the k to Ricci flow um, in terms of a reference metric plus dd bar of a function, phi. And uh, in, in that case, it was known before that if you, if you were to write omega t as some reference metric plus dd bar phi, so this is some reference metric, then, then it was known that phi, phi converges in C1 alpha for any alpha between 0 and 1. So in, a very general case, in, the, in this general case, that was already known. So our, our result you know, takes it further, takes it to actually get the conversions of the metrics. 
So, so for example, you know, that this would not be enough to prove from a house, from a house of convergence, whereas now we, we get it. And we also get the exponential conversion. Another, oh, yes. So, so of course, it's expected in general that you do get smooth convergence in one and two. And in fact, in two, it's already known. So there's a more recent result of, so this result of ours is now a couple of years old. There's a result of Valentino and Yu Guangjiang, which says you get, uh, you get, smooth, you get smooth convergence in two. So they improve the result. A smooth convergence in the, in, 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 in the, in the, in the fiber direction. So now let me, so this is the, this is, all of this is under this assumption which looks rather strong. So how to uh, remove that? So, 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 so it turns out that uh, there's a, assuming something called the abundance conjecture, from algebraic geometry. So if you assume the abundance conjecture, this is widely expected to be true, let's just assume it's true. It tells you that in the collapsing case, M looks like this, but possibly with singularities. M has the following form. It has the following form. Um, that uh, so, hit, hit, so 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 we have that M that there exists a, a holomorphic map pi from M to to B where where this is a, now a holomorphic su subjective map it's not going to be a submersion though it's going to have it's, this is going to be what's called a fiber holomorphic fiber space maybe it has it has connected fibers. But more, oh, oh, and what is B? So B is no longer going to be a smooth Kähler manifold, but rather B is going to be a normal projective variety, possibly with singularities, normal projective variety of general type, normal projective variety of general type, possibly with singularities, and um, and pi may have critical values. So if we define, let's define a set S prime. To be the, uh, I'll define it to be the uh, uh, the the singular the singular points, the singular points of B. Of course, M itself is is of course smooth, but but B B may be singular. Um, and and add, add in the the critical values, the critical values of pi. So where pi may not have a maximal rank. Then this is a, this is an analytic subvariety of B. It's an analytic subvariety, and um, and and we we define uh, let's define um, S to be the pullback to to B. So now we have M uh, M maps to B. We have some. S prime here, and then it gives us some S here. Okay. So we have this is an, an analytic subvariety of M. Analytic subvariety. I guess my, my picture is probably not very good. Let me. Uh, well, okay. Okay. So 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 this. Uh, so as I said, this is not really assuming anything, except well, except a big conjecture in algebraic geometry. So what, uh, so what is known in this case? Well, let me say a consequence of this is, in, in, in fact, it's known that, um, so, 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 so it follows, that in fact, if you take pi and restrict it to m minus uh, this s prime, minus s, um, this is a map from m minus s to, to b minus s prime, this is now going to be a submersion. This is a holomorphic submersion. And the fibers, pi minus 1 of y, uh, are, the, are, are, are Calabi R manifolds. So we're, we're basically in the same picture, except now we have some, we have some sing singularity, we have some singular set. OK, so what is known in this setting? Oh, 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's S, sorry, that's S. Yeah, of course, S. S prime, yes. Because S maps to S prime. Okay. Okay, it could be some, you know, some, something else that's S. Okay, so, so the, um, so, so, so our result in this case is, uh, of course, a little bit weaker. Um, is uh, as follows. So what what can we show? Well, we show that omega t um, minus uh, this pullback of omega b. This is going to converge um, well, let me let me write it this way. Let's say this uh, this this will um, with respect to omega naught. This will tend to zero. Um, in uh, in C zero lock, some compact subsets of M minus S. So you just get convergence on compact subsets away from the singular set. And and we we actually lose the exponential convergence in this case. And the number number two is uh, if you take the this e to the t omega of t minus um, minus uh, this omega semi-Ricci flat. So again, you can define the semi-Ricci flat metric on the fiber. And y, this is going to go to, and so in, if you take the C alpha norm, um, so this is, again, in the, in the, in the, on, on, uh, on the fiber, so this will, will, will go to zero as t goes to infinity. For any um, for any uh, alpha between zero and one, and uh, so so here so here here why this is this is going to be uniformly uniformly for for y in a compact subset in a compact subset of uh, of, of 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 b minus s prime. So in compact subsets away from the singular part. This is um, you, you get this uh, you get this convergence again. This is restricted to the to the fiber, so we lose the exponential convergence in both of these, and you would also of course lose the global gromov halstock convergence. But we do get convergence of metrics, whereas before the only thing that was known was the convergence of potentials in C one alpha, so that wasn't enough to say what happens to the metrics. So we we, we managed to get this, um, and. Um, Right, and again, the tosati jang result would apply here. In fact, they get better. They actually get smooth conversions on these fibers. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, at the moment, what's known. Of course, it's not, uh, you know, the ideal result. You perhaps want to know globally what happens. But at the moment, we just have to work away from the singular points. All right. So that was what I want to say about the collapsing case. Let me uh, say something about the non-collapsing case briefly. So... Um, what is that? So the non-collapsing case. So this has uh, this is called. Okay, l let me let me remind you what the what the assumption are assumption is. So we assume that um, the first Chern class or minus the first Chern class of M is in the boundary of the Kähler cone. And we assume it's not the zero class, and we assume that uh, it has it has a positive volume. Um, another way of saying this is that so when I say minus the first Chern class of M, you can also of course talk about the first, about the canonical class of M. It's the same thing. So it means that this minus C one of M is what we call bigger net. Another way of saying it is that um, in algebraic geometry language is that M is a minimal, is a smooth minimal model of general type. It's a smooth minimal model of general type. And this, um, this setting has been considered um, a, a while ago by Suji. Let me, let me remind you what the result is. So in the, I don't know, perhaps the 90s, I think, uh, Suji proved the 
following, and then it was some parts of the proof were clarified by Tian and Zhang, but uh, Suji and Tian and Zhang. Uh, what they showed was that um, that uh, there exists a sub variety. There exists a sub variety S in M. Um, uh, such that if omega t solves the normalized Kähler Ricci flow, so rem remember that we're talking about the, the normalized version of the flow, so ddt of omega is minus Ricci minus omega, omega t is zero is some fixed Kähler metric omega naught. So if this solves this, then we have that, that, that omega t converges to a Kähler Einstein metric smoothly on compact subsets of M minus S. So omega Ke is, is a, where this is a, where, where omega Ke is a Kähler Einstein metric. So it's Kähler Einstein metric, so in other words, Ricci of omega Ke is minus omega Ke. But it's only defined on, on, so it's a smooth metric on, on M minus S, but it doesn't extend to be a smooth metric on, on, on the whole of M. Okay, so that's the, uh, that was the sort of state of the art until um, maybe the last 10 years, the last five or 10 years. Um, but then, uh, of course, we want to know a bit more about what happens. Um, so let me, let me say a little bit more. So in fact, um, so, so in fact it, it's well known that uh, we have a map pi. So just as in the previous case, we have a map pi uh, from M to, um, let's call this manifold M can. It's called the canonical model. So you have a holomorphic map. Holomorphic map, where again M M uh, so there exists some, some holomorphic map, and uh, M can may have singularities. So it's again it's in this normal projective variety, normal projective variety, and in fact it's known that that M can admits um, a, a, admits a ad, admits a a singular Kähler Einstein metric, singular Kähler Einstein metric with bounded potential, with bounded potential, and that's due to um, work of uh, so the, the fact that it, you can you can also see it as bounded potential is due to Tian and Zhang and uh, and Esidier uh, Gage and Zeriahi. And then a natural question is to ask whether do, does do the manifolds M so just as in so this plays the role of B so then the question is uh, do, do, does M omega T converge to 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 M con and with the with the Kähler Einstein metric in some appropriate sense so so to what extent is that is that true okay uh, so so. The result that I want to describe is, is, is actually you know, very, very restrictive. It only holds in dimension two. Well, let me say, we only prove it, we only prove it in dimension two. So if uh, n equals two, um, then in fact this map uh, pi um, maps, uh, uh, maps my, my uh, well, let me say, it, 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 it contracts minus two curves to all overfold points. And in this case, this, um, this M can, uh, with the Kähler Einstein metric, is, is actually, an, uh, a, you know, it, it's, a, it's a smooth, this is now a smooth Kähler Einstein metric in the overfold sense. So this is an overfold Kähler Einstein metric. The existence of this was proved by uh, Kobayashi using the ideas of yeah, uh, yeah, no ban. 
Um, and uh, in fact, right, so, so we proved the following. Okay. So this is uh, Jan Song and myself. We, we considered this case where the minus two curves are isolated, uh, uh, non intersecting, and then recently with Bing Guo, we removed that assumption. And then there was another proof by Tian and and, and Jang, but this is a different Jang. This is Jen Lei Jang. Um, which is that um, along the normalized Kayla Ritchie flow, so, um, so again, n is 2, omega t solves the normalized Kayla Ritchie flow, then, then, uh, then m omega t converges in the gromov hausdorff sense to this m this orbifold, right, let me write it, M can. So this is the manifold you get by contracting these minus two curves to orbifold points with this orbifold Kähler Einstein metric. And uh, let me make a couple of remarks. So in fact, um, the, the result of, this result of, of Tian and Jen Lei Zhang, so we, we kind of proved this independently at about the same time. But in fact, they proved more than us. So Tian and Zhang also showed that there, there's it's a completely different method, and there works in it works in dimension three as well. So their their proof uses um, a, an integral bound on the Ricci curvature and Chiga colding Tian theory to get to get to to get the convergence, um, and they use the the existence of this K Einstein metric and properties of this K Einstein metric. In our case, we. We did a very simple, our, our, our result is much more elementary. It's just a maximum principle argument applied to the, to the K. de Ricci flow. So it's a much more elementary type argument. Um, right. And of course, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's expected that, um, that one could extend this kind of result to higher dimensions. And there's results by Jan Song about, this, about the, uh, the properties of this, uh, of this manifold. OK, in the last two minutes, can I say something about the estimates? So, uh, the, the, not really, but uh, the, the, um, the, the idea, you know, all of our estimates you, you use the maximum principle. So we use the maximum principle. And the, and the key thing is to use the, um, is, to, is to, to reduce to a, a parabolic, to, to a parabolic complex Mojan pair equation. Complex Mojan pair equation. So we have some equation of the, of the following form whether you take some reference metric plus dd bar phi, and then you take some you know, carefully chosen volume form. And then we use, uh, we, we, we use some estimate which in fact was already known, that phi in, in, in the setting of the collapsing case um, under the assumption actually, and phi dot, in fact, both go to zero exponentially fast. And, and, and this is enough to, uh, in fact, uh, extend to, to get uh, estimates on the metric. Um, together with, by using, using a, a, a Calabi type estimate. So we need a Calabi type estimate in the fiber direction. But since I'm out of time, yep, so, so, I'll, it's a good place to stop. Thanks. This is. Uh, why is this general type? Well, it's, I guess it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a well-known result that if, if, you, if you have a, a cohomology class which is big and NEF, if the, if the, if C1, if, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the canonical bundle is big and NEF, well, it's almost the definition of big, actually, is that your general type. So it's sort of, but I guess if you wanted to really prove it, you'd probably use the, um, the Riemann-Roch theorem if you wanted to really prove it. But it would just really follow from, from Bing Neff and, 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 and this, Riemann-Roch for, for Neff line bundles. Is that, is that what your question was, or perhaps yeah. you, were, you were asking something else? T is infinity implies it's NEF. Yeah, this is, you can take this as a definition of being big. If you're NEF and you satisfy this, that's, that's big. Yeah, but if you wanted to prove that, the, 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 right, about the, 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 the line, the, the, the H0 of the, 
Pass the comment bundle? Yeah, you do three minute rock there. The minus, well here, I, because I'm assuming it's K is an F, there's no minus one curves. Yeah, because, it, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so you know, in the in the general case, Yes. Yes. Um, but that's it. You mentioned uh, from all the great conjecture. Uh, uh, abundance conjecture, yeah. So uh, uh, it's a bundle. If you start with it, so uh, in two dimensions, uh, the case, right? Uh, you prove this is a formal hot dog convergence. But uh, in general, uh, well, well, even in two dimensions, you see a problem because in two dimensions you can still have singularities, and then you don't have global gromov hausdorff conversions. So to get the global gromov hausdorff we really have to assume there's no singularities. And uh, what's the difficulty? Well, we don't actually. I don't even know exactly what the um, what the conjecture should be about what what happens gromov hausdorff I think that it's, just, it's, I think it's um, expected that the metrics, for example, have ba bounded diameter. Mm -hmm. But that's not even, I'm not even sure it's clear that that should be the case. So I don't even know whether the metrics should have bounded diameter or not. I'm not sure what happens as you approach a singularity to those metrics. So I don't, even the conjecture is not that clear, I'd say. The regular part is, in the in the in the collapsing case, in the non-collapsing that's true. Yes, in the non-collapsing that's true. Yeah, you have bounded. Up. But I, but but I'm talking about. Oh, I was talking about the collapse. Maybe you're talking about. The, yeah, I was talking about the collapsing case. Oh, sorry, you were talking about the non-collapsing case. Oh, okay. Then I got confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the non-collapsing case. Sorry, yeah. In the non-collapsing case. Yeah, you, 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 you do a bounded diameter. That's proved by Jan Song, actually, that you always have bounded diameter. So you expect, you just expect gromov hausdorff conversions, yeah. But also, uh, um, this uh, picture, you have uh, away from single error, you have kind of a homomorphic Oh, okay, in the, in yeah. the collapsing case, yeah. Yeah, in the collapsing case. Right. Uh, then uh, uh, you have a kind of curvature estimate away from single error, uh, the email, inverse email. Yeah, but we just have to work on compact subsets away from the singularities. That, in that case, we really don't know what's happening as you approach the singularity. 